Munich, January 21, 1879. My dear Howells, it's no use. Your letter miscarried in some way and is lost. The consul has made a thorough search and says he has not been able to trace it. It is unaccountable. For all the letters I did not want arrived without a single grateful failure. Well, I have read up now as far as you have got, that is, to where there's a storm at sea approaching. And we three think you are clear out howlsing howls. If your literature has not struck perfection now, we are not able to see what is lacking. It is all such truth, truth to the life. Everywhere your pen falls, it leaves a photograph. I did imagine that everything had been said about life at sea that could be said, but no matter, it was all a failure and lies, nothing but lies, with a thin varnish of fact. Only you have stated it as it absolutely is. And only you see people and their ways and their insides and outsides as they are and make them talk as they do talk. I think you are the very greatest artist in these tremendous mysteries that ever lived. There doesn't seem to be anything that can be concealed from your awful all seeing eye. It must be a cheerful thing for one to live with you and be aware that you are going up and down in him like another conscience all the time. Possibly you will not be a fully accepted classic until you have been dead a hundred years. It is the fate of the Shakespeare's and of all genuine prophets. But then your books will be as common as Bibles, I believe. You're not a weed but an oak, not a summer house but a cathedral. In that day I shall still be in the cyclopedias too, thus. Mark Twain, history and occupation unknown, but he was personally acquainted with Howells. There, I could sing your praises all day and feel and believe every bit of it. My book is half finished. I wish to heaven it was done. I have given up writing that detective novel. Can't write a novel, for I like the faculty, but when the detectives were nosing around after Stuart's loud remains, I threw a chapter into my present book in which I have very extravagantly burlesqued the detective business, if it is possible to burlesque that business extravagantly. You know I was going to send you that detective play so that you could rewrite it. Well, I didn't do it because I couldn't find a single idea in it that could be useful to you. It was dreadfully witless and flat. I knew it would sadden you and unfit you for work. I have always been sorry we threw up that play in Body and Orion, which you began. It was a mistake to do that. Do keep that manuscript and tackle it again. It will work out all right, you will see. I don't believe that that character exists in literature in so well-developed a condition as it exists in Orion's person. Now, won't you put Orion in a story? Then he will go handsomely into a play afterwards. How deliciously you could paint him. It would make fascinating reading. The sort that makes a reader laugh and cry at the same time. For well, Orion is as good and ridiculous a soul as ever was. Ah, to think of Bayard Taylor, it is too sad to talk about. I was so glad there was not a single sting and so many good praiseful words in the Atlantic's criticism of Deucalion. Love to you all, yours ever, Mark. We remain here till... Middle of March.